Welcome to our video on the Ark Encounter. Here we see the fabled Ark being brought to li- Wait a minute, that's not it. Okay, here's Noah's Ark. What? Damn it. There we go. Here's the fabled Noah's Ark, nearing completion. Let's hear what Ken Ham has to say about it. Doesn't it just fill you with awe seeing these biblically inspired diesel powered cranes and equipment lifts? Yep, I'm convinced. Noah definitely could have built such a structure if he had diesel powered cranes and equipment lifts and a work crew. Hi, I'm Ken Han, President of Advances in Genesis, the Creation Museum, and the coming Ark Encounter. I am amazed every time I come here and stand and look at the size of this full size Ark. Yes, that's definitely amazing. But you know what else is amazing? What else is amazing is where the funding came from. Apparently most of this project is funded by a TIF. That's Tax Increment Financing. This type of financing is normally used by a community to attract developers to an area that is considered blighted, such as an abandoned shopping mall or, or abandoned buildings, things of that sort. This area, however, does not look like uh, it was suffering from... Uh, being a blighted area to me. Well, whether it was or wasn't, the city of Williamstown, Kentucky approved $62 million in funding for the Ark Encounter project. It appears that over a 30-year period, 75% of Ark Encounter's real estate taxes would go towards repayment of the interest-free TIF. So instead of that money going to the city and the citizens, it'll be used to repay those bonds. It really is amazing. And I'm also amazed, too, at the way in which God has brought together hundreds of talented people in a miraculous way to make this happen. You don't suppose any of that is because of the uh, financing we were talking about a little bit earlier. Bah, that's crazy talk. Miraculous. Yeah, definitely miraculous. Nothing to do with the millions of dollars. What a place this will be. Guess Noah had some pretty heavy machinery. Those Noachian nail guns are pretty impressive. Interstate 75 and they'll get on Route 36 and then come to the large parking lot, 4,000 car spaces. They'll then go to the ticket booth and get on shuttles. These shuttles will take them on a mile ride down a valley, across a creek and up the other side. And they'll be basically leaving the modern world and then coming up into Noah's world. And it is a beautiful drive. Noah's world. By that we mean Fantasyland, where we leave science, logic, and reason at the park entrance. I mean, Disney World doesn't try and convince you that Mickey Mouse is real. Now inside the Ark, there's 132 Ark bays that are filled with world-class exhibits. If you really want to convince anyone, you might want to try filling it with animals representing every existing species covering lots of different topics about Noah's life, about how Noah could have fit all the animals, all the animal kinds. The... Oh, there's that word, kind. Ken loves that word. He never says species, he never says family. 
He uses kind because the definition can change based on the conversation he's having or what he's trying to prove. Land animals on board Noah's Ark. How many would need to be on board the Ark? About flood legends from around the world. He said it, flood legends, as there is absolutely zero evidence of a global flood ever. There'll be sculptured animals in cages. Okay, everyone see that? That, my friends, was a dinosaur. Ken insists that there were dinosaurs frolicking with humans at the time that Noah built this ark. Unless this ark legend occurred 65 million years ago, this is highly improbable. And then there's going to be exhibits too on how do we know the Bible's true, and we're going to present the gospel, but in a very tasteful but challenging way to people. As people exit the ark, on the lower deck, they'll then go down a ramp into a very large gift shop. Ah, there we have it. The real moneymaker. Everyone knows that you can spend twice as much in a gift shop as you do for park admission. Well, here I am on the roof deck of the biggest timber frame structure in the world. Notice that Ken said timber framed structure not timber-framed boat or timber-framed ship. The reason for this is that the construction methods used are not in keeping with any wooden shipbuilding methodology. Further, wooden ships take on water. Large wooden ships take on a lot of water. And yet there is no mention in either this project or any biblical reference of any method for removing bilge water from the vessel. Although there is no evidence of it in Ken's construction here, the biblical story does make reference to an attempt to make the ship more waterproof. Uh, that would be the coating of the ship inside and out with pitch. Pitch is a substance much like tar. At the outset, it seems logical that this would, in fact, waterproof the boat and prevent it from taking on water. However, this is not the case. This story was obviously written by someone with no knowledge of shipbuilding, as a wooden vessel covered in pitch would develop cracks in the pitch at the seams of all of the wood joints. The mythical Noah and his family, and any animals he may have brought along, would find themselves at the bottom of the ocean in short order. there'll be a video here of that too. Thanks for watching.